We welcome you to Raleigh, North Carolina, where today NC State basketball returns to its roots. Valvano Arena, Reynolds Coliseum, as the Wolfpack welcome in the Terriers of St. Francis, Brooklyn. Hello, everybody, alongside Chris Corciani. My name is Andrew Sanders. Delighted to have you with us. And Chris, as we look at this matchup, I want to highlight two impact players, two newcomers. It starts for NC State with Manny Bates, the redshirt freshman. I tell you, the big man from Fayetteville, North Carolina, has been a good surprise early on. He's averaging six points, four rebounds, but more importantly, he's protecting the rim and blocking five shots a game. Five shots a game. He has quickly become a fan favorite here in Raleigh. Meanwhile, for the Terriers, Unique McLean has been huge so far. He does a little bit of everything. Grad transfer from Massachusetts, averaging 11 points, eight rebounds. He is the heart and soul of the team. And we are underway as the tip is last touched by the Terriers. It'll be NC State basketball. The Wolfpack in the home white uniforms with red trim. St. Francis Brooklyn in the road reds. This is the second meeting all time between these two teams. Met a few years ago back in 2016. It was a 25 point win for NC State in Raleigh, but not in this building. It came in PNC Arena. C.J. Bryce has to pick up the basketball. 12 to shoot for the pack. This is Markel Johnson. Had it poked away once again, and a turnover. Chauncey Hawkins to the rim. Tell you, that's the way they want to play. They want to pressure full court, get in the passing lanes, and there they created a nice uh, turnover for a bucket. Chauncey Hawkins, the leading returning scorer from last year for the Terriers, even though he wasn't a starter last year, one of the best sixth men in the NEC. They got a lot of players that are interchangeable. They're very tough. They got kids from the inner city in New York. They got New Jersey guys, and what you know about those guys is they're tough. They're not coming here just to play. They're coming to win. A block by Dennis Chellin, the 6'8 senior from Turkey, and it's a good start here for the Terriers. Rossell Hurley, outside. And a patient possession here. Chellin underneath, and he tries to shoot over Bates. Tough to do. Hey, Bates has done a great job of, again, five blocks a game, but he's changing and altering a lot of shots. Beverly's three is good. It's nice to see that. Uh, Penetration by Johnson finding his main man, Braxton Beverly, for the knockdown three. NC State at 2-1 and one on the season. Lost opening night to Georgia Tech in an ACC battle, but then beat Detroit Mercy, dispatched FIU on Wednesday, and now back in their old home. Bryce with the lob, and Bates couldn't finish it. It's a good look for uh, C.J. Bryce. That's the way NC State wants to play. They want to go in transition. They want to run off of steals. Uh, they really don't want to set up and have to run their man-to-man -man offense. They'd rather score with opportunities. Foul going to be charged to NC State sophomore Jericho Helms. First foul of the game for either team. Yaya Evans looking to drive. An offensive board. Guess who? It's Unique McLean. I tell you, Manny Bates did a great job, Andrew, coming over and changing that shot, but that's where he needs more help. If he goes to block a shot, he's got to have his teammates help him. Markel Johnson missed game one due to an ankle injury. They're working him back in, and he continues to get healthier and healthier. Two different teams. Well, Markel Johnson's on the floor. Uh, you know, this team can compete against anyone. You know, the Georgia Tech game when he didn't play. You know, it's tough to compete when you got your top player uh, not out there with you. Helms with nice hands. And it's an NC State forced turnover. Long three from Beverly. Bryce and one. I know Beverly has range. That one might have been a little bit out of his range, about 35 feet, but C.J. Bryce does a nice job going to the offensive glass. What I like about C.J., he does a little bit of everything. You know, if you need him to score, hit a jump, or slash to the bucket, 
goes to the offensive glass. He's just one of those all-around very good players. Bryce now a redshirt senior, averaging just a hair under 20 points a game at 19.7. And get this, he's also shooting 61% from the floor. He's the only player in the ACC to be top five in the league in both of those categories. Not only is he scoring a lot, but he's scoring efficiently. Hey, that's what you like. You shoot the ball over 50%, that's always a good number. And after the made free throw, NC State can dial up the pressure. It's a travel on Hawkins. That's Kevin Keats basketball right there. He wants to create some turnovers with the press. He also wants to create some quick shots from the opposition so that they can push the ball up the floor and try to get some easy buckets. Just before the Bryce free throw, you heard some cheers from the crowd as DJ Funderburg, Pat Andre both checked in. Tell you, we were talking about it earlier. DJ Funderburg really looks good. He's put on about 20 pounds since last year. You know, I believe that he's going to have a breakout year. He, along with Johnson, both getting worked back in as Funderburk was suspended for a couple of games, made his debut against FIU and on Wednesday and scored 11 points, had seven rebounds. Johnson called for the travel. Like he just lost his balance. Yeah, he was just a little bit out of control. You know, the one thing with Markel is you'd want to see him more consistent every game. I mean, it seems if if it's a big game, he's always ready to play, but the consistency is something that Coach Keats wants to see. Rossell Hurley, the senior from Cleveland, banks it in. Long outlet to Funderburg. Great look by Mark Kell Johnson down to Funderburg that really got out early and beat everybody down the court. The fast break after a made basket for the Wolfpack. Tough shot doesn't fall. Tip from McLean. Won't go either. This is Devin Daniels of NC State. And an offensive foul. Just a nice look. Markel Johnson with the streaking. I tell you, Funderburg does a good job of running the floor for a big guy, and if he does that, he'll get rewarded. I wanted to, to make sure I was a little bit confused there, Chris. It was Daniels that they called uh, for that offensive foul. Yeah, I think they got him with his off hand. He was actually fading away, but he still was pushing off a little bit out of control. An open three for the lefty McLean won't fall, but an offensive rebound again. This one from Yaya Evans. He'll take a three. Why not? Okay, NC State had two guys on the ball, and that's always the most dangerous person. They both left him, and he buries a triple. Evans, just a 21% three-point shooter from last season, but that one was open. Terriers trailing by just one. That was a heat check. He was feeling it a little bit. <laughs> Daniels takes Evans off the dribble. That's pretty. Hey, he makes some shots that really look difficult. A lot of the shots he makes, oftentimes he's going off the wrong foot. It makes it very difficult to guard. Kurtenich misses. Stevan Kurtenich seeing his first minutes along with Rob Higgins. Bryce crosses Higgins over and finds Andre. Hot shooter. Splash. Tell you, that guy can flat out spray it. You know, was talking to Coach Keats earlier, said one of the best shooters he's seen. Turnover, Terriers. Back here inside this beautifully renovated facility, Valvano Arena, Reynolds Coliseum. We welcome everybody back. Sitting courtside here with Chris Corciani. My name is Andrew Sanders. And as always, Chris, it's a great atmosphere in here, great energy to it. How does it feel for you to be back? Being back at Valvano Court in Reynolds Coliseum, get chills just walking in, let alone being here front row with you. It's a special uh, atmosphere always, and uh, the pack certainly off to a good start. 
15 to 9, NC State leads at the first timeout. And it just forced a turnover, so it'll be an inbounds for Devin Daniels and the Wolfpack. I think uh, NC State and Coach Keats, they like the pace of the game. They're getting after it on the defensive end. They're very active with both their feet and their hands and arms. And uh, I think Coach Keats would be pleased with their efforts so far. Daniels with the stop and pop and misses. It is a tough atmosphere to play in. And since the Wolfpack moved to PNC Arena, they're 16 and one here in Reynolds. Higgins is a freshman they really like. He misses the corner three. You know, that's the kind of shot Higgins needs to knock down. You're down six in a hostile environment. You need to hit those to stay close. Bryce lost his footing. It'll be a blocking foul on McLean. And he just recognized the side as advantage, put his shoulder down. Yeah, I'll tell you what. <laughs> there was three things that could have happened there. One was a travel. One was an offensive push-off. And one was a block. And for NC State, I thought they got very fortunate there. Markel Johnson to inbounds. Just a few years ago, he reclassified, joined NC State a year early. He was the youngest guy on the team. Now he's a senior. He's a leader. He's the only guy who played against St. Francis Brooklyn back in 2016. That was just his second game uh, in his career. He scored six points. He throws one to Funderburk who jams it. I'll tell you, the senior leader just threw a dime right there to Funderburk, but he's really matured as a player both on and off the court. And uh, I think that you're going to see some big things from him this year. Be one of the top guards, not only in the ACC, but in the country. A couple of freshmen on the court right now for St. Francis College. Pickens nearly lost it. He'll pull up mid-range. And a good adjustment. I tell you, Higgins was under control, took a couple dribbles, raised up, and knocked it down. The freshman from Middletown, New Jersey, coming off his best game in his short career, 13 points at Longwood on Thursday. Funderburk is looking for Beverly to shoot that ball. Well, when, when Funderburk rolls to the bucket, he needs to roll but not turn his back. That actually was not a bad pass. Higgins is feeling it back-to-back -back buckets. Hey, Higgins likes that spot right there, Andrew. A couple dribbles and a pop. Knocked down his last two. Daniels saw he had the quickness advantage, and he takes the advantage. Another lefty layup for him. It's good to see him getting going. He's had a shaky start, but I believe that Devin Daniels is one of the key guys this year. Uh, you know, if he has a big year, the NC State Wolfpack can really compete at a high level. At times, a little bit out of control, but his upside is, is very re rewarding. Higgins goes around to Joshua Nurse screen, and a three ball knocked down. Malia Kosic. Kosic is uh, one of three European players that they have on their roster. They do a very good job of recruiting overseas. Johnson makes that look easy, it's not. I tell you, that's the kind of shot if you were playing horse, it'd be tough to make, <laughs> let alone defenders all over him. Daniels on a run out, throws it down, and that's what he brings to this team. No question, very active on the defensive end, but that's defense creating offense. Wolfpack making the Terriers stretch out some passes here. The pressure has been difficult. They lead by eight. Here you see Markell with a nice little pick and roll dish off to Funderburk and Dev. Kevin Keats in his third season with NC State looking to bring the pack back to the NCAA tournament. Picked sixth preseason in the ACC. So high expectations for the third iteration of his club. Tell you what, he's brought a lot of excitement back to this program, and people are excited about where it's headed. Coach Keats is fired up about the charge drawn by Jericho Helms. Tell you what, the one thing that would be hard to argue 
is who is the best dressed coach in the ACC. I've got to go with Kevin Keats, hands down. He brings it night in and night out. And especially when they come back to this building. Oh, absolutely. It's always special when he brings the squad back to Reynolds. He always throws on his best threads and loves his shoes. Nearly a turnover. It will be a turnover as Higgins is able to regather. This is the first of two games for NC State here at Valvano Arena. They'll go back to back as Higgins walked with the basketball Tuesday. They'll play Alcorn State. It's nice to get a little dose of Reynolds for these kids. And I've said for many years I wish they could play more games in Reynolds, and I know there's a lot of other things that go into that, but just having these kids experience it, having the fans experience it, it's just a wonderful place. Helms was stripped that time by Hurley. Bates with a block, regather, and a foul. They're going to count that. Wow, he almost threw it over the basket. <laughs> Here you see Bates changing the shot. Then again, well, that's <laughs> very fortunate. That's a yeah. shot that if you were playing a horse, yeah. it'd be tough to do. It'd be hard to repeat <laughs> that one, no doubt. But one in a hundred times. Nonetheless, the Turk, who I had a chance to talk to before the game because I played in Turkey one year professionally, and I spoke to him, and uh, he's from... Uh, An Ankara, and I played in Istanbul, so we had a nice little back and forth. And a whistle on the drive. We'll see who they put the foul on. Tell you, Higgins does a real nice job. You know, there's some guys that go east-west. He's a north-south guy. He's trying to go to the bucket, penetrate, either stop and hit the shot, which he's done twice, or he's looking to dish the ball. But he's not at east-west. He's north-south, and that's what you like to see. Had 11 points in the second half up in Farmville, Virginia, against Longwood on Thursday. Early around the screen, that's a contested shot and a little too contested for Jericho Helms. That'll be his second foul as he fouls the jump shooter. Jericho played great defense for about 22 seconds and then he bailed out. Never want to foul a jump shooter. He was in great position with his hand up. However, you just can't touch him. So Rossell Hurley to the line, one of three returning starters for this Terriers ball club along with Dennis Chellen and Yaya Evans. And again, you can really Count Ch Chancy or pardon me, Chauncey Hawkins is a fourth because he's the sixth man and one of their leading bucket getters. I tell you, St. Francis isn't going away. They're down five. They're playing gritty and tough. And as we mentioned, this isn't an easy environment to come in and and uh, compete. But so far, early on, only down five. Johnson with the blow by layup. Hey, he, he can beat you so many different ways. He can beat you off the drive. He can beat you shooting. He can beat you in transition. Just has a huge arsenal on the offensive side. Good anticipation by Andre. Intercepting the pass. And now Johnson just searches his way through the lane. Ball will stay on this end. And three subs come in for Terriers head coach Glenn Breika. Third most wins in school history with 133. Twice he's been a finalist for the Skip Prosser Man of the Year Award. Known as one of the best guys in college basketball. You know, he's had a long run there too. And wow. Manny Bates slams it home. I tell you, he's a great athlete. If you just put the ball up by the rim, Manny will find it and slam it home. A jumper answered by Hawkins. That's a big part of NC State's offense, run a lot of ball screens, and then as Bates just rolls to the rim, you get the feeling Manny Bates is going to have quite a few dunks this year. Yeah, you know what's been really impressive? There you see Bates scoring again. He doesn't force anything. He lets the game come to him. You know, nothing 
you know, just right around the basket. And on the defensive end, that's the big thing that's going to be the difference from this year and last year. You know, last year we didn't have a shot blocker. Uh, this year you can pressure the ball knowing Manny's back there to protect. Challen off the mark. Andre cleans it up. And that's kind of been the missing piece for Kevin Keats, right? Because the pressure he likes to run, it's a lot easier to do so when you have a shot blocker. We're going to call Markel Johnson for an offensive foul here. Well, that's why it takes time. You know, it takes time for Keats to get his players and the pieces here. And that's all coming together. Uh, when you press and you want to pressure, the one thing you certainly need is a rim protector. And he has that in Bates. You look at the Wolfpack, they're shooting almost 70%, but seven turnovers have kept the Terriers close here. Hawkins, nice crossover. Bates affecting the shot. Second effort is good. Christian Rollair with the bucket. Andrew, that's the second time Manny Bates has come over, challenged the shot, and there needs to be other Wolfpack players coming over to help him. You know, he's helping them, but it's got to be reciprocated. We got a nice pass from Devin Daniels. Just There's the head coach of the Terriers of St. Francis, Brooklyn, Glenn Breika. Tenth year, longtime assistant. Uh, back from 1991 to 2004. Been left to go be an assistant at St. John's. He's back the last 10 years, 133 wins. Okay. And as I said, known as one of the best guys in college basketball. Well, you're not out of school for 10 years unless you're a very good coach and very good person. And uh, he's done a good job. I tell you, it's tough recruiting at that level. And uh, as you can see, he's got two Serbians. He's got one Turkish player, one from Canada, uh, recruiting the New York metro area. Uh, it's a tough job, and you have to find players that are kind of jewels that other people aren't taking. But obviously, he's done a remarkable job. He's been there 10 years. Hawkins able to split the pressure, but then he throws it away. Good ball movement. Gets Andre an open three. Bryce with the board. Knocked out of his hands. Last touch by Bryce. Tell you, that was a really good look in the corner by Pat Andre. Markel made the extra pass, and then CJ went to the offensive blast, but couldn't, couldn't quite get it to uh, stay. Higgins has got an open three. Made a couple mid-range jumpers, but off the mark that time. Well, as a, as a point guard, Chris, a guy like Pat Andre makes your job a little easier. Okay. You'd love to see that guy standing <laughs> in the corner. You get a guy like that can shoot. You just want to give him a little bit of space. He came in last game against FIU and knocked down four threes when the pack really was struggling. And there's always going to be a place for a guy that can shoot the ball. May have some limitations other places, but if you can shoot it, you can find a place to play. Hawkins didn't really let Johnson come down. And so he will be whistled for the foul. That is his second. And that's a big foul for Coach Breika and the Terriers. Hawkins going to have to take a seat. And Stevan Kurtenich back in. Well, you know, you hate that. And you see uh, Coach Breika talking over there. You don't want to pick up a foolish foul 30 feet from the basket. You need your point guard down nine with seven minutes to go in the half. So just a kind of foolish foul. We'll stay on this end. That's really kind of been C.J. Bryce's bread and butter this year en route to scoring 20 points per game. He seems to be able to get his shot whenever he wants. His mid-range is very nice. You know, that's the strength. He goes in there. He puts a little body on you. And uh, usually is able to hit that. There you see Markel Johnson trying to flush it. Do you think that ankle's feeling any better? The ankle looks like it's 100% when you, you go down the lane like that and trying to just slam it on the big man. You see a real nice block.
Now it's Rossell Hurley who's going to guard Bryce. Okay, he's tough. When he gets the ball 10 feet or in, takes a couple dribbles, uses his body really nicely. And there he didn't use his body to lean back and shoot. He actually spun to the bucket and got fouled. 24 points, 11 rebounds against Georgia Tech. The game NC State was missing both Markel Johnson and DJ Funderburg. And even now, this Wolfpack team still a bit limited with injuries. They don't expect to be too serious to both Danny Dixon and A.J. Taylor. So that's left them with just eight scholarship players. And it hasn't really allowed Coach Keats to do what he likes to do in practice, which is run you know, five on five yeah, as, that's, as hard as you could possibly go. You know, the thing is you, you want to use these games early in the year to get better, find your rotation, and that hasn't been the luxury that uh, Coach Keats has had, especially early on with your two best players sitting out in Thunder Burke and Markel Johnson. Quarterbaum grabbed the offensive board. Tell you what, St. Francis a little undersized uh, against NC State, but they've been hitting the glass hard. They're only trailing by one. I tell you, they're a bunch of tough kids, very gritty. And like I said, you know, they didn't come here just to play. They came here looking for a W. Higgins had to get it up. Shot clock was winding down. But yeah, if they can rebound with NC State like that, it's gonna help keep them in the game. It sounded like Daniels. Thought I heard a smack, but evidently even, and it, you know if you hear it all the way over here with the headset on, it, it, but evidently not. That is the seventh team foul, and it will be free throws here. And for D.J. Funderburk, one of the best free throw shooters in the ACC last year. He was eighth in the conference at 78.5%. He got to the line 12 times on Wednesday against FIU. Hey, it's such a luxury when you have a big guy that can step to the line and knock down free throws. You know, late in games, a lot of times coaches are saying, you know, foul the big guy. You know, he's only shooting 50, 60%. But when you get a guy like DJ that can step up there and knock him down, it's a huge advantage, especially late in games. Uh, Higgins turned his ankle. He's grimacing a bit. And the officials are going to call a timeout here to give Higgins a chance. And you could see immediately he turned that ankle. Yeah, there's no question he was hindered by something. And Chauncey Hawkins is going to come in with two fouls. And, uh, you know, with 538, he's going to have to play smart for the Terriers and not pick up his third foul. Here is Hawkins with the basketball. His Terriers trailing by 13 now. Biggest lead of the game for NC State. Tennis is walled off by Andre. Dangerous pass. McLean, second effort. And once again, it's the offensive rebounding. Roll air scores. Yeah, they're, they're relentless. You know, they go hard. They go to the offensive glass. There they ran down the court. I don't know if we've got a warning or a technical on the far side with Coach Bracker. Yeah, I believe it was just a warning. Bench warning. Good call. Thunderbird definitely had that pivot foot hop up and come back down. Yep, we had a good angle of that. Here you see him with a, a strong move. I know these players nowadays get away with a lot of things, but that certainly was a travel. No continuation here. It'll be a foul before the shot, but it will be one and one free throws here. Pat Andre's first foul. So two, or pardon me, one and one here for 
Kurtinich. So you never got called for a travel back in the day? Back when I played, they called traveling all the time. Nowadays, <laughs> you don't know from one game to the next. Are you able okay, to take two so steps? You just could get take... away with it. No, I, I never got any calls. Trust me. I, I, <laughs> I, have, I have never had a uh, real, real good relationship with these Zebras. Though before the game, I did have nice chats with them now that I'm not playing. <laughs> comes Dennis Chellin back in and McLean will take a quick breather. It's a real important four minutes for the Terriers. You know, they're de down nine. They need to keep it close. You know, here is where NC State, a couple shots, could really kind of blow this game open and uh, go into halftime down double digits. That's not what the Terriers want. about that from C.J. Bryce? Tell you what, when he goes one-on-one -on -one and he's 10, 12 feet out, puts a body on you, he wants to feel you, knocks it down. Tell you, it reminds me of an old player, and Andrew, you're not quite old enough probably to remember, a guy by the name of Mark Aguirre. Played with the Dallas Mavericks for many years, but one-on-one, -on -one, he'd always put a body in, fade back, Got to the foul line all the time. You'll have to Google that name. I, I've, I'm certainly familiar with the name, but I'm going to be honest, didn't see him play. <laughs> Ross L. Hurley's going to check out here. Full court pressure from the Wolfpack. Hawkins immediately has it taken away. That's what they do. They want to speed you up. Look at McLean get up for the rebound. Wow. He went up to a whole nother level. Shot clock resets to 20 on an offensive board. This is McLean. Looking inside, roll air. And the Terriers continue to hit the offensive glass hard. It'll be a jump ball. Possession arrow says it stays this direction. We'll take a timeout in Raleigh, NC State, please. Well, freshman Trey Kordelbaum has played eight minutes in this first half. And why did he choose to go to St. Francis? Well, his father, Fred, who's the current director of basketball operations at Kansas under Bill Self, he's known Coach Breika for a long time, all the way back to the mid-2000s when they were assistants at St. John's under head coach Norm Roberts. That's a pretty cool connection. And now Fred's son, Trey, is playing for Coach Breika in Brooklyn. It's not what you know, it's who you know. And in recruiting, you want to throw as many nets out there as possible. Anything that can give you an opportunity to get a player, you take. 19 on the shot clock for the Terriers as they inbound it. And a quick shot from Hawkins, gets his own miss, and he'll feed Rollair. Blocked by Bates. Seen Rollair go at Bates a couple of times underneath, and this time Bates gets the better of him. Yeah, Rollair's not going to see many better rim protectors than a guy like Manny Bates all year. Kurtenic with a kick out, a McLean three, too strong. Here comes Daniels, six points for him already this afternoon. Turns the corner around Hawkins, tipped by Bates. Now Funderburk, and NC State just continues to get tip after tip with this large lineup. Last touched by Markel Johnson, they say. Fans here don't like that one. But with both Bates and Funderburk on the floor for Kevin Keats, some good size. It's going to be an interesting lineup, and, and they can play that lineup against, uh, you know, bigger 
teams. You know, the thing about that lineup is you got DJ Funderburk that can step out and knock down a perimeter shot. So it's not like you have two bigs in the paint. We talked about the luxury of having a big time shot blocker like Bates, but about the luxury of having a quality stretch four as Roller puts it in with two hands. But that stretch four is so important in today's game. There's no question. You know, that's the way the game's being played. It's, it's not throwing the ball into the pivot. A lot of times you've got four or five guys on the perimeter, even big guys looking to knock down threes. Tell you what, Markel Johnson can't do it any better. That's one Manny Bates wishes he had back. Hawkins walks. Another turnover. The tenth of the first half from St. Francis. And Cordelbaum is going to check back in and try to prevent Hawkins from picking up that third foul. You notice the last possession before all the offensive rebounds, Daniels went right at him. Right at him. Yeah, you know, smart play. Their leader with two fouls. And uh, I think that's a good, smart decision to get him off the court with two minutes to go and not pick up his third. A good sign for the Terriers is Rob Higgins is back out there. Twisted that ankle earlier. Johnson got some oohs and ahs out of the crowd, couldn't finish. And here is Cordelbaum. Scoring is slowed over the last couple of minutes. Beverly fouls Kurt Tinich here. Yeah, that's not a smart foul by uh, Braxton Beverly, especially when they're in the bonus. Let them beat you. They're struggling to score. You don't want to foul them 30 feet from the bucket. And St. Francis, one of its last seven from the field. NC State just two for its last ten. Kurtinich has been money from the free throw line to this point, three for three. The sophomore from Serbia made just one start last year. And he's had a much bigger role this season. And 12 points on Thursday in Longwood. His good free throw shooting continues. Higgins doesn't really step out on Johnson. Misses, but there's the putback from Funderburg. Okay, Funderburg did a good job. He just kind of saw the ball go, going up. Sometimes being a rebounder, you need to know the angles of where the ball's going to go. And Funderburg saw that ball, and reacted, and put it up and scored. And Funderburg was a good rebounder, especially on the offensive end last year. He was a jumper from Kurtenich, but. Uh, you have to think that 15, 20 pounds that he added can only help him in ACC play. Well, last year, there's no doubt that being 20 pounds lighter than he is, he would just get pushed out of the way. You know, this year, that added strength and weight is only going to help him tremendously. Markel Johnson's assist on the 18-footer knocked down. That's what I was saying. With Bates in the game with Funderburk, he has the ability to step out and knock shots down just like he did. So you can run that alley-oop right at the rim or to Thunderbird mid-range. Shot clock's turned off. Ten seconds for Higgins and the Terriers. See what they do in the final possession of this first half. Portobaum will rise up, and he's fouled by Beverly. I'd like to see another look at that one. Seems like Beverly was in pretty good position. It's foul number two on Beverly. Mm. I think the Terriers may have got one now. The yeah, fans here just saw a look at the replay, and as you just saw watching at home, not a whole lot there from mm -hmm. Beverly. Four seconds to go here. You'll probably see some pressure from the Terriers, and uh, NC State's going to try to rush it up and get a shot. 
<laughs> and the Wolfpack tried to get away with the fast one there. I was wondering where the pressure was. There was no pressure at all. And uh, Devin you know, Daniels, the only guy on the line still. <laughs> <laughs> the shooter and Devin Daniels. NC State tried to get away with the fast one literally and just push the fast break. And Cordobaum and Daniels are sitting there saying, wait, yeah. I thought it was three guys. Cordobaum was like, listen, I got another shot coming. <laughs> he you was looking around. Oh. And there is the pressure. Good if it goes. Not too strong from Daniels. Entertaining first half. Head to the locker room, NC State leading. 44 to 34. We'll take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We'll have more from halftime here in Raleigh. Happy Monday, Wolfpack Nation, and welcome back to Pack Top 5. It's officially week 11, and you know what that means? Another week, another set of highlights. Let's check out those top moments from NC State Athletics. At number five, the NC State Rifle team posting their program's second best score to defeat 12th ranked Memphis. The team finished with 16 season highs and 13 career best. This will vault the pack into the top 10. Kicking its way in at number four, NC State men's soccer, Vinny Duran had a critical save right before halftime against Duke in the ACC tournament opener. Duran in the 45th minute denied a header to keep the pack in the lead against the Blue Devils. Balling in at number three, Elisa Kunane of the women's basketball team, sophomore. Just a sophomore led all players with 18 points and nine rebounds. Almost had that double-double there. Kunane shot seven of 11 from the field and went two of two from the three-point line. Making their top play debut at number two, NC State women's tennis Anna Rogers and Elena Smith reached the ITA National Fall Championships doubles final. Entering the match, the two had 10 consecutive wins. Reaching the double final was the program's best in the history of the tournament. And for your number one play, NC State women's basketball, the 700 club with Wes Moore. The 14th ranked women's basketball team improved 2-0 after defeating UNCW 80-40 right at home. Coach Moore has led the Wolfpack to four NCAA tournament appearances and back-to-back -back Sweet 16s in 2018 and 2019. Congratulations, Coach. And that's your pack top five. For more news and information, visit gopack.com. And to possibly see your nomination, use our hashtag pack top five. I'm Jasmine McCoy. We'll see you back here next week. Hey, don't grab it too hard. <laughs> don't grab it too hard. <laughs> Sticky. What is that? Oh, you can't tell me. I'm just, this stuff, this chocolate. No. Is it gonna be on my hand after I pull it out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what color is it? You can't tell me. What I don't know what color I like. <laughs> Twix. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's some type of candy. No. Nah. I guess you could say it's a dairy product. Oh, this butter. <laughs> the ACC and the NEC meeting today in Reynolds Coliseum on campus at NC State. We welcome you back courtside alongside Chris Corciani. My name is Andrew Sanders. And we saw an entertaining first half, Chris, in which uh, the Terriers were able to stick around with NC State, most importantly because they rebounded the ball. Yeah, there's no doubt. You know, they really went to the offensive class. They had 12 offensive rebounds, but this is a tough tier team. They're Absolutely. not going to back down. They play hard, and they're going to have to come out with a lot of that energy in the second half as well. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first 20 minutes. And, well, for the Terriers, I mean, it started right away. The turnover forced by Hawkins to set the tone. You know, Hawkins came out there, beat Markel Johnson to the ball. And there you see another offensive rebound. Finds an open shot, knocks down the three. Hawkins showed off that mid-range jumper. 
Uh, he had just four points in the first half, but you saw all four of them there. Meanwhile, for NC State, uh, they got pretty much what they wanted offensively. The Wolfpack shooting over 50% in this one. Yeah, no question. You know, they had a lot of easy baskets like Manny Bates' dunk there. Devin Daniels had a couple of nice drives midway through the first half. Here you see him just flush one down for the easy deuce. NC State once again getting some balance scoring to this point. And already two players in double figures, C.J. Bryce with 12 points and D.J. Funderburg with 10. And you look at it, the Wolfpack dominating points in the paint, as you might expect. But it's the Terriers, especially with that offensive rebounding, despite uh, you know shooting a far less percentage, they're getting more opportunities. Yeah, no question. I think NC State needs to do a little bit better job of going to the defensive boards and limiting them to one shot. You know, the Terriers only shoot 36%. They get that number up. They're one of eight from threes. Yeah. You know, that's the difference in the game. It's only a 10-point game. Early on in this game, in the first four minutes, is going to tell us a whole lot. Absolutely. And that's something that Coach Keats always stresses, is getting more shots than the opposing team. But it's the Terriers who have three more shots than the Wolfpack to this point at halftime. Well, Just about ready to begin second half action between NC State and St. Francis. Ten-point lead for the Wolfpack. Andrew Sanders, Chris Corciani with you. Chris, second half, you said just before the break, you felt like the first four minutes or so were going to tell us a lot about this second half. So what would you like to see from both teams? Well, I think for the Terriers, they need to shoot the ball better. You know, they were you know, only 36% as a match of one of eight from threes. They're going to have to knock down some more shots, and then they had 10 turnovers. They're going to have to limit those turnovers in order to get back into the game. For the Wolfpack, you want to see more of the same. You want to see them creating tempo, getting into to the lane, feeding their big guys. They need to do a better job of going to the defensive boards and limiting the Terriers. The Terriers had 12 offensive boards, and that's something that the Wolfpack's going to have to clean up. Keep an eye out for that because, as you said, if St. Francis College can knock down a couple of the, those threes, this could get interesting. There's no question. You're only down 10, uh, you know, down in the locker room. I'm sure coach told them, come out right away. Let's make a game of it. We're here. Let's try to win it. Short baseline jumper from Beverly. I think that pass just ended up taking him a little further past the basket than intended. Hawkins for three. And cold shooting continues. And the second half begins, much like the first half ended, a little sloppy basketball. A little sloppy. You know, both teams like to play up and down. Uh, so they're probably pleased both on the defensive end with those turnovers, but offensively both teams need to cover the ball and take care of it. Evans cuts right down the lane, and he missed the lay-in. Oh, it's unfortunate. Nice play. Just couldn't finish. Another alley-oop to Bates. That's something NC State can run maybe five times a game with him. I tell you, it's a luxury to have a guy that big, that's athletic like Manny Bates. You just throw it up there, and he makes you look good. Another fast break opportunity. Johnson, one more time. I think the fans here are entertained. Yeah, no question. They they like the dunks. Manny Bates does a great job of running the floor, you know, for a big guy. Just a love. Uh, that's a point guard's dream when you got a guy that can finish at the rim like Manny Bates can. Bates, six foot eleven, long arms. Bryce back to the free throw line where he just continues to pour it in. Tell you, you know, also from a point guard perspective, that's not an easy pass, and Markell makes it look very easy, yeah. just floating it right up there. Timing with Bates is good, but uh, he makes it look a little easier than it really is. 
Offense foul is going to go against Jericho Helms, and that's number three. By the way, that's the first uh, free throw that Bryce has missed today, seven of eight from the line. Thirteen point NC State lead right now. Largest is 14 in the turnovers. NC State has ratcheted up the defense. Johnson will take it himself this time. This is the way they want to play. You can see Coach Kevin Keats urging them to. Ah, they were getting after it. They just don't want to foul like that. But that is the style. That's the Kevin Keats style of basketball that he's brought from the University of Wilmington is get after them, create tempo. We want to go up and down. And you're seeing that displayed here early in the second half. And it's a winning style of basketball, whether he was at Hargrave Military Academy, UNCW as an assistant at Louisville, no, or here no, at NC State. He's no, a winner. Everywhere he's been, he's had great success. And it's just going to take him a little bit of time to get his players here. And you're starting to see that come. You know, we mentioned earlier with Manny Bates being a shot blocker, you are able to pressure and create tempo when you got a guy back there that can protect the rim. Bryce with a follow? No. So the Terriers coming off a made three-point basket by Higgins, and what can they dial up now? They'll turn it over. Didn't seem like the Terriers had much there. That's one where you, you'd like to see the ball get thrown back out. Let's set it up. We're down 12. Let's get a good shot instead of trying to force the action. And unfortunately for the Terriers, he turned it over. So Kurtenich replaces Rossell Hurley after that turnover. Helms with a strong board. He'll go to the line looking for a three-point play. Tell you, that's what Helms does best, all the little things. He goes to the offensive glass. He runs the floor. You know, he gets in good position, fights, works, then uses his body with the and one. You know, he's the guy that I think as the year goes on, he's going to really mature as a player. You know, he knows his role. He does all the little things. Um, and that's why he's getting the minutes he does. But I think you're going to see his game just progress and get better. Jericho Helms, just a sophomore. Those are his first points of this second half, or of this game, I should say, is the traveling violation right in front of us. Well, they had the uh, 10 turnovers in the first half, and we've got two or three early here in the second half that NC State has created. Yeah, four in the first, not even three minutes. Good defense by Hawkins. Johnson heads the other way. Another alley. And Bates will go to the line. I'll tell you, Andrew, Manny Bates is going to have to make Markel Johnson food. He's going to have to take care of him. I mean, he is just doing everything. Full Markel's clothes. you gotta, you got to take care of that point guard. I think Bates, all his buckets have come from about six inches from passes from Markel Johnson. Eight points for Bates. And an offensive rebound from Braxton Beverly. Oh, look at Bates just use his wingspan to recycle that possession. Another offensive board. It's Johnson and everybody on the Wolfpack team trying to get an offensive board on this time down the court. A little dipsy do, a little fancy there for Markell. Oh, Bates comes out of nowhere and swats it. Up and down the floor go the pack. Helms will drive baseline. He is pushed. Tell you, Bates certainly is a fan favorite. Here you see the drive and Bates playing a little volleyball right there, but you know. That's what he does. That's He knows his role. Markel, just a little bit too fancy on that one. I think the most impressive thing, too, is he had that blocked easily, is one. And then, two, he didn't block it out of bounds you know, on that's, purpose. That's a great point, Andrew. A lot of people are trying to knock that ball in the third row. He kept it in play and started a fast break. Price for two. And there's no doubt he could have put that one in the third row if he wanted. <laughs> there's no doubt, yeah. He was 
could have smashed it hard. But all the great shot blockers, Bill Russell is, you know, they're the guys that are smart. They block it to their teammates. Here you see the pack what a off pass. and running. Wow, wow, what a pass, Markel Johnson. That is what you call thread in the needle. Just before the break, Markel Johnson pulls this pass off, splitting the defense to C.J. Bryce. He's got eight assists, and I just happen to be sitting next to one of the best passers of all time, so I got to ask your partner, rate that one. I tell you, that's as good as you're going to see. I tell you, that's one Magic Johnson, John Stockton. They would marvel over that one. Eight points and eight assists for Markel Johnson. Bryce with the rebound. I tell you what, C.J. Bryce, 17 points and six rebounds. He's having a big game, and it's quiet, and he lost his shoe. He's doing it all. He's collecting his shoe, collecting rebounds, easy buckets. I tell you, C.J. Bryce does just about a little bit of everything out there. He's a special kind of two-way player, plays hard. Uh, just really enjoy watching him play. We've got an official time. Here's a look at the NC State selection in the preseason poll. Pick sixth in the conference. And that you would think would put, coming from the ACC, that would put the pack squarely in the NCAA tournament. Starting to build that resume now. No question, you take six uh, right now because you know, you're probably looking at eight or nine teams to get in. Uh, but a lot can happen. I mean, if you look at year in and year out, one game can be the difference between being in fifth place or ninth or tenth place. Sure, so sure. You just got to protect home court and try to steal a couple on the road. Hawkins directs traffic. 15 on the shot clock. Well, Higgins has had a nice game. And that's tell a you, shot he can definitely hit. I really like Higgins' game. Earlier in the game, he knocked down two in a row. Then he had a little injury, but he's back here fighting. He's a gritty player, can really shoot it. And uh, I'm sure the Terriers are looking for big things from him this year. Hawkins, I think. Oh, wow, I thought Bryce had gotten a piece of it, but it went in. I didn't know if he got fouled, if he got blocked. <laughs> Whatever happened, he knocked it down. Nice pull up. Johnson tried to stuff it down. That's the second time he's done that tonight. Not many point guards can do that. Sees a little gap, goes up. Mm. Sure looks fun. He's trying to put somebody on a poster. There's no question. You know, I think, uh, as you mentioned, Earlier in the broadcast, I think that ankle's feeling pretty yeah, well. Yeah, he's been explosive today. Is it a poster these days? Is it putting somebody in a GIF? It must be a GIF. I mean, I'm, I'm real old. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to see Markell play with that intensity. Um, that a lot of games, you know, you don't know from one game to the next. Is he going to show up? Does he want to play? Uh, he's always ready to play the big boys, Duke, Carolina. But it's good to see him with the attitude and excitement today. Evans and Ross Air both working really hard. Roll Air, pardon me. You know, again, give the Terriers credit. You know, they're down but fighting, going to the offensive glass. You know, that's going to be a strength of theirs is just their activity and they're never giving up, especially going after second shots. McLean will roll down the lane, and his shot drops. Hit the back of the rim and just was dead and fell in. Nice driving shot there for him. Quick release. Braxton Beverly came into this season with 136 made three-point shots, the most in NC State history through the sophomore season. 
And we've got another turnover. Six forced by the Wolfpack in this half. And that's been the biggest difference. I think you said it well. You said, you know, the first few minutes were going to tell us, and, and that's what the story has been. Right, the fast break points that have been created by the NC State turnovers has really hindered the Terriers. Rolier with a nice find inside. And I thought, honestly, I thought that was off the rim, but they're going to get Evans here for interference. Here you see Higgins with the shot underneath, and ugh, just so close. I tell you, Higgins is a good-looking freshman. And he's got a good, strong build. He's quick, can really shoot it. He's got a nice feel for the game, especially being a freshman on the road, playing a ACC opponent. And this time it's Beverly's turn to feed Bates. Tell you, Bates does a nice job of rolling. And the guards have really done a nice job of just throwing it up there. Manny Bates probably got six or seven field goals, probably a, from a distance of about six inches to nine inches. And, and he just knows his game. And that's what's special. He's not trying to do what he's not capable of doing. He's, he's a guy that has a chance to shoot 60%. No question. You see how tough that is to defend. Unless you have elite size and, and the Terriers just don't have that, I don't know how you stop that ball well, screen and then roll. Well, the other thing there is, as Daniels was penetrating, you know, Bates' man has to make a decision. You know, if I go over, they're going to throw it. So it just creates a lot of problems when you have a guy – that's as big and as, uh, and as athletic as Manny Bates, both on the offensive end and the defensive end. Daniels goes one and two. But NC State still pressing, pressing after the missed free throw, and I think it caught the Terriers by surprise. Another turnover. Yeah, those are the ones that hurt because it's an unforced turnover. And it's one thing if you're trying to make a play and you turn it over. That's one you, you just don't like when the defense didn't create it. NC State has limited Unique McLean this afternoon. Just four points on two of seven shooting. Beverly's three. His second of the afternoon. Nearly a double dribble from Hurley. Ten to shoot. McLean with the right hand, and Nurse, I think, pushed. He did to get that space for the rebound. We got another timeout. NC State still extending that lead. Stretched it out now to 26. Here's a look at some key dates this year, and once just right around the corner. The ACC Big Ten Challenge, always entertaining. Of course, the ACC tournament back in Greensboro, North Carolina, and then Selection Sunday. Circle your calendars, March. 15. But coming up, ACC Big Ten Challenge. Always have to have multiple TVs in the living room. Make sure you, you catch all the action for that. It's a fun couple days, and, and I can tell you it's, it's really enjoyable for the players as well. They look forward to it, and uh, they want to represent their respective conferences. Uh, they certainly want to win their game, but they, they do want to win that. And could, some coaches use that for recruiting. You know, our conference beat their conference. Um, but uh, it's a nice thing. It's nice to have a game in early December that really has a lot of value and meaning and can be very impactful from when March 15th comes Selection Sunday. Absolutely. McLean was thinking about the pass, changed his mind last second, didn't want to throw it away. 
And he turns it over with the travel. Yep, that's number 18, and that is a number that uh, the Terriers aren't going to be real pleased with, 18 turnovers, and we still have 11.28 to play in the second half. But a lot of basketball left. NC State knocking on the door of 70 points already. And the size of the Wolfpack, the length defensively, causing all kinds of trouble in this second half. They break the pressure this time, and Nurse dunks it. I tell you, if, if you're looking at some things that NC State hasn't done well, they haven't really kind of when there's penetration, they haven't really helped one another out. There was a number of times the rotation has not been good in the first half and second half. Talked about the balanced scoring of NC State. So far this season, had five players scoring double figures against Georgia Tech, six players in double figures against FIU on Wednesday. It's once again been a balanced scoring attack. But C.J. Bryce has led the way, and it's Bryce with another basket. He's got 21. It just seems like the ball finds him all the time, uh, whether it's an offensive board, loose ball. He really has a knack for the ball. Third foul on Markel Johnson. Good entry pass by Cordelbaum, and now Nurse will go to work. The big man. Five to shoot. Hawkins realizes it. Oh. And C.J. Bryce is saying, what did I do? This is a quick whistle. It was immediate. I don't think he got him up top. If he got him anywhere, he got him down low prior to him putting it up. Well, Hawkins will definitely take the free throws. Look down Attention low. That left hand See, I think up. he got him down low. CJ was trying to be a little sneaky. <laughs> I know he didn't get him up top, but, but down low he may have brushed him. You know, when a guy's going to shoot, it's that slightest touch yeah. that can throw that shot off. the vision of Markel Johnson. Tough play by Helms. Oh. oh, he won't get the roll. That's where Helms is at his best when he's down low, on the block, a couple dribbles. Does a really nice job of always head faking around the bucket, and that's why he shoots a lot of free throws as well. Listed at six foot seven, but long arms. I really like him defensively. I mean, you look at his frame, he can really, with his quickness, he can guard one through five. Yeah, that's really important. And the way Coach Keats likes to play, you know, guys are out of position because they're pressing. And, and as you mentioned, uh, you know, Helms can, has the quickness to guard a point guard and the strength and size to guard a bigger player. over the back on Rossell Hurley. Uh, already in the bonus, huh? Ninth team foul. Oh. Four fouls now on Hurley. Other foul trouble, McLean has three. Both Helms and Markel Johnson have three.
By the way, those 24 points against the Yellow Jackets on opening night, that was a career high for C.J. Bryce at NC State. And he is closing in on that. Oh, great effort by Helms, but Terriers get the defensive board. Guess I jinxed him, so Bryce is still stuck on 22. Oh, DJ Funderburg says, no, sir. There you see uh, Funderburg rushed back for the buck. It's a luxury to have one guy back there that can protect the rim, but NC State has two. That is double the pleasure. Tough shot. And Kurtinich, they're going to wave it off. Called for an offensive foul. And I thought he did that even prior to hearing the whistle. Kind of pushed off with his left arm right here. Pushes off once and then pushes off twice. Could have been called for two fouls there. That was crafty the way he sealed off Bryce's arm to I, contest the shot. I spent eight years playing basketball in Europe. And the Serbians, not only are they tough as nails, they're crafty and smart. And that's what you just saw right there. Good entry pass, Daniels to Funderburg. Daniels with a nice over-the-top pass, but Funderburg did a great job of sealing his man, making that lob pass available. Hawkins can't turn the corner. Kurtenich's three is a brick off the backboard, and the pack want to run. Oh, big block from Nurse. The help defender erases it. Oh, what a great drive. Coast to coast and finish. Hawkins under control, got in the lane, scooped it up. It's a good looking play there by Hawkins. The up and the under for Chauncey Hawkins. So Nurse, first of all, erases it. Now, if you watch, Funderburg's going to try to do the same thing to Hawkins here, but he comes up empty. I don't know how he got that one to fall. Yeah, that's a little dipsy do. But uh, nice drive again. He was under control, saw a seam, kind of hit the seam and laid it in. Higgins back in as he replaces McLean. Helms will come out, and Beverly returns to the floor. And Funderburg missed the free throw. Yeah, we were talking about it, what a luxury it was to have a big guy like Funderburg that could knock down free throws. It doesn't help us out. He's been all NC State here in this second half, but the Terriers starting to score a little more here over the last couple of possessions. I mean, keep in mind, this was a 10-point game at halftime. Another Markel Johnson assist. I'll tell you, Markel really works well with uh, DJ Funderburg and Manny Bates. Just throws it up there. There's a guy that played for Syracuse many, many years ago, Sherman Douglas, who was one of the first guys back in that time that kind of had a feel for it, always would throw it up to... Uh, his players, but it's it's not an easy thing to do, and Markell does a great job with it. Eighty points for the pack, looking for more. Daniels, too easy. Just relentless. They just keep coming at you like a wave and don't stop. You know, NC State's continuing putting the pressure on the Terriers, and that's just the way they like to play. Nurse dragged that pivot foot, and that will take us to immediate timeout. DJ Funderburg having fun. I tell you, Markell threw that ball, knew exactly where it was, threw it before he even caught. 
Markel Johnson has been busy today distributing the basketball. Nine points, nine assists, and he might just get a Chris Corgiani type double double today by the time he's done. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, he's had one of the nicest passes I've seen in a long time. That three quarter court bounce pass. You know, you're not going to see a nicer pass at any level than you saw with Markel, but he's been under control. He's uh, scored when he's needed to, he passed when he needed to. He's, it's good to see him out there playing with the kind of emotion. Some of these games, he's just not in it. But, uh, you know, being a senior, he knows it's his last time around. I'm glad to see his energy and effort today. And as I think you've said before, we've seen him a lot today. Not really drive the basketball, but probe really the defense and wait uh, to see if that post player is going to commit or not. And when that has happened, it's been lob after lob to Bates or Funderburg. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Or in this case, to Bryce. Three to shoot. Bryce has to force it up. He does catch iron. And Max Farthing tracks down the rebound. The freshman from Raleigh gets a warm welcome from this crowd. He's a fan favorite. He came in and got a loose ball, and the crowd's going to let him know they appreciate that effort. the 10th team foul, so the double bonus for NC State. Farthing has played in one game for NC State. But that's his first college point. Good for him. What a nice little touch. I've been to a couple practices, and uh, it's a very good shooter. And, uh, Played at Word of God, where John Wall went to school, where former Wolfpacker C.J. Leslie played in high school. The jumper knocked down by Hawkins. He's in the double figures. And Kevin Keats saw something, I think, on that defensive possession that he didn't like. Wants to make a point to his team. Well, that's coaching when, when you're up near 30 and you don't like something. You don't, he didn't want to wait until a timeout. He didn't want to wait until after the game. He wasn't happy with uh, Braxton Beverly's defensive effort or his defensive missed assignment. And he wanted them to know right away. I love seeing that with Coach. Kevin Keats, people know him for his defense and the pressure style that they play, but that leads to what we've seen today. A lot of turnovers for us. They first 20 turnovers, which of course leads to a lot of easier shots and causes the Wolfpack offense to score more. It's and the old saying, your, your best offense is always created by your defense. And that's the way NC State wants to play. They want to get steals, they want to get turnovers, they want to get long rebounds, and then they want to push the ball up the floor. It's a lot easier scoring in transition than it is when a team is packed in five guys back. Daniels for two more. It's been so impressive what the Wolfpack has done under Kevin Keats. NC State hadn't averaged 80 or more points per game in a season since the 95-96 season, but they have been above 80 on average in both years under Kevin Keats, and so far this year, well, the first three games, and now they are obviously above the 80-point plateau. Again, all four games, the pack has been above 80. No doubt it's been exciting having that style of play, but I think as Coach Keats gets his players in, it's going to be more exciting as the Wolfpack wins. And it's just going to take time. As you can see, Manny Bates, a big guy that can protect the rim, takes time for a new coach to come in and get the exact pieces. And he's had to go different routes. He's gone the juco route he's going the grad transfer route but uh he's doing a great job on the recruiting trail and it's very bright future here for him at nc state devin daniels now with 13 points and yet in each of his first three years nc state has brought in a couple graduate transfers whether it's been al freeman sam hunt back in his first year you had wyatt walker last year this year 
a uh, couple more grad transfers in Danny Dixon and Pat Andre. Right, you're just seeing that around the whole country. I mean, the grad transfers, you know, it, it, it's amazing. With Pat Andre, when he put his name in the portal, he had close to 100 schools that wanted to recruit him. And, you know, again, you get a guy that's a great shooter like Andre. You get a guy that has been tested in a number of games. You know, those guys have been around the block, and yeah. a lot of teams want those grad transfers. And that can be really the struggle for a team maybe in the Northeast Conference, like St. Francis Brooklyn, is if you find a guy that excels in his first couple of years, instead of saying, wow, this guy is going to, you know, probably be first team all conference as a junior and senior, you lose a lot of those it's, guys. It's very difficult and can be very frustrating for um, coaches at the low to mid uh, levels of college basketball. And, you know, you, you think you found a diamond in the rough and he has a good year and he leaves on you. And, um, you know, it's, it's very unfortunate. It's also tough to find those players in order to compete. Helms just too strong inside as we go under the four minute mark. Yeah. Higgins three goes in and out. I like Higgins' game. Would have liked to have seen that one fall for him. Deep three for Andre. Yeah, he has been really quiet today. Just three points. He hit that early triple, and that's it. But I think in the flow of the game, he hasn't really played all that much. No, that's not his game. He's a standstill knockdown shot. If you get him putting the ball down on the deck, that's what the Terriers want. Timeout, Coach Spryka and St. Francis, Brooklyn, after a fast break layup. Pretty good day at the office for C.J. Bryce and D.J. Thunderbird. No doubt C.J.'s done just a little bit of everything. Score, rebound, come up with some steals. Just had a very nice all-around game. And we get Yaya Evans here with the push. And this will result in two free throws for Jericho Helms. Chase Graham now in the game for NC State. Freshman from Raleigh. Played at Athens Drive High School. So both Graham and Farthing seeing some minutes here. Hawkins uses his oh, quickness to get right around Andre. What a great little drive and scoop. It has been a... As always, nice lob, and Helms will get the roll. You know, it's it's always been a, kind of a reunion anytime men's basketball comes back here to Reynolds Coliseum. And you know, earlier we were hanging out before the game, typical reunion. It was you, Chucky Brown came by, Ernie Myers came by to say hello. Elliot Avent was here as well, baseball coach. So you guys were having a good time, and uh, I think. You had some some story you're telling yeah, me. Yeah, I'll tell you, this was funny. We're sitting whoops. there. <laughs> We're sitting there just chopping it up, all having a good time. Sure. Ernie, Chucky, uh, Coach Elliot Avent, the baseball coach. And, and as we're talking, I said to Elliot, I said, man, that manager's got a great shot. So one of NC State's managers out there, perfect form, knocking down shots. And it's mesmerizing there. And I keep saying, man, I love that kid's shot. Finally, Elliot Avent calls the guy over and he says man you've got Corciani going crazy he loves your shot you're knocking him down 
and I asked him, I said, where are you from? You're from around here. He says, I'm from Charlotte. And he says, uh, my coach was Rodney Monroe. You couldn't make it up. We started laughing. Uh, it was unbelievable. So the manager's name is Josh Roberts, and Rodney Monroe's his high school coach at South Lake Christian. It's just one of those stories that was too funny. Didn't know the kid. Uh, loved his shot, and he ends up being my partner's uh, player last year in Charlotte. That's an unbelievable story. Yeah, it was one Wait, You and Rodney obviously had that special connection. Yeah, we, we and still we, to this day. <laughs> we had a special connection, but that was just one of those weird things when I said, kept saying to Coach Avent, man, I love that kid's shot. Man, he can knock it down. Seem, and, seem uh, a little familiar to you? Yeah, exactly. I'm sure Rodney <laughs> taught him how to shoot it. Another timeout here. NC State knocking on the door of triple digits, 95 to 61. And, and once again, you think back just a few minutes ago, it's a 10-point game at halftime. No question. You know, it was a tale of two halves. You know, I think they did a good job in the first half, St. Francis sticking around. Uh, but, yeah, the second half, NC State kind of put the pedal to the metal created more aggression on the defensive side, pushed it up the floor, and uh, just had some really good contributions from a number of different players. You know, I love the way Manny Bates played today, DJ Thunderbird, CJ Bryce. You know, they all uh, really bought the right game. So it looks like uh, Markel Johnson will not pick up that 10th assist today, but I tell you what, He's been climbing up the leaderboard. Uh, just last week, he passed a couple of great players here at NC State. Nate McMillan and Cat Barber came into this game at eighth all-time at NC State and assist with 411, put him at, at 420 uh, now as he continues to move his, his way on up that list. He's a tremendous player, great court vision. There's my guy Higgins knocking it down. Tell you, for a freshman, he's got great composure, good strength kind of really rises up for his jump shot. He's going to have a bright future at St. Francis. Tying his career high with 12 points with that three ball. You know, his father, Rob, is Chase Graham will try a three, and the crowd gets excited for that. Higgins' dad, Rob, was a quarterback at Rutgers and spent time in the NFL with the San Diego Chargers, so he comes from an athletic family. No question. Helen's going to get called for. I'll tell you, Andrew, it's just so much fun being back in Reynolds Coliseum. This is uh, a place that I had tremendous memories. Four years of games. It's, you know, there wasn't a game that you just weren't so excited for. And it was a tribute just playing in front of these wonderful fans here in Raleigh. And the place used to get loud and crazy. And uh, no place better than Reynolds Coliseum. And always a tough ticket when the pack come back here to Reynolds. Oh yeah, you know, the home court advantage, I think most teams have about a three point home court advantage. Here at NC State, when we were playing in Reynolds, it was a touchdown and an extra point. It was a <laughs> seven point advantage. And I've, I've had guys like Bobby Hurley and Kenny Anderson, they just said, listen, there's nothing like Reynolds Coliseum. So much great history here. And again, NC State going to play a second game. The next one on Tuesday against Alcorn State will also be here in Reynolds. The fan, the fans rise to their feet as the clock hits zeros. Kevin Keats and NC State win this one in a big way, 95 to 64, the final score. And it was that defense early in the second half that set the tone and really stretched that lead out. No doubt, the second half they turned up the heat. They created a lot of the offense on the defensive end, and that's something I'm sure Coach Keats and the staff is going to be quite happy with when they look at the film. NC State impressive in scoring 95 points. Five players scored in double figures, led by C.J. Bryce. And to help my partner out with the tie. That's teamwork right <laughs> I there. I love that. <laughs> For Chris Corciani. I'm Andrew Sanders, our fantastic crew here in Raleigh. Hope you enjoyed this one. We'll say so long. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. NC State wins at 95-64. The final score, this has been a presentation of ESPN.